Hey everybody, it's Edward with Sword and Fortress, and uh, we're finally getting back to some five parsecs from home. Um, the last time we were here on turn 10, we ended up losing our good friend here, Sydney. She died valiantly trying to get rid of the last set of rivals for us. Unfortunately, she didn't survive, and we ended up picking up more rivals. And we ended the turn pretty much bankrupt. Um, we had paid off the ship, but yeah, now we have no credits as we start into this turn. And so, yeah, we'll be picking it up from there. Um, took me a little while to come back to this just because I had a lot of plans for that character. That was going to be the next quest line, dealing with her being an orphan and other stuff. So it took me a little bit to kind of figure out where we were going to go from here. Um, so as we go to turn 11, some housekeeping we've got to do. Uh, the purifier gives us a credit and then we lose that credit to pay everybody off. And um, fortunately here now, we uh, go ahead and delete our good friend, Sydney, because she is no longer with the crew. One of the things the crew is going to be doing is saving up a couple credits to give her a proper funeral. So we'll roll it. We're thinking, you know, three credits should be enough to do a good enough send off. Yeah. So there, unfortunately, she is. And now we go to the next turn. Um, so Bree, because we have the medical bay now, Bree, let's actually get some spelling corrected, uh, is no longer in the med bay because with the medical bay, we remove two from the, uh, yeah, two instead of one from how long they've got to spend in the med bay. And uh, before we start the rest of the stream, make sure you're taking care of yourself. Make sure you're uh, happy, you're doing things you enjoy, especially with how the world's going. Make sure you're taking some time for yourself. All right. Well, apparently I've got a little figure hiding from five parsecs from home. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at what our crew is going to be doing. So even though Bree just got out of the medical base. She can't go out and do stuff with the crew. She can only uh, participate in the battle this turn. So one of the things we're gonna be doing is we wanna also get off of this planet. We just picked up three new rival, two new more rivals, defeating the whole purpose of that last turn of trying to get down to no rivals and getting a patron and really starting to play the game out. So we need five credits to get off the planet and we need an additional three credits for Sydney's funeral. So we're hoping by the end of this turn, we'll be getting seven credits. That's the hope, no, eight credits. Something, Ed can't do math. So, let's go ahead, see what everybody's going to be doing. So, we're gonna go ahead and uh, have Laura play decoy. Altel's gonna play decoy. Decay, wow. Decoy. Decoy. And we're just gonna have those two do decoys because then it would only require a roll of one to uh, go for it or to get ambushed by our uh, rivals. The rest of everybody else is going to be doing trade. We need money. We want to get off this planet. So everybody else is doing trade. We're not even going to try and fix anything. We are strictly trying to get some credits together. So going over to trade, uh, we go down to page 79. All right, so what is Bree gonna find in her trade? 
91. Medical reserves, we get two more stim packs and uh, two med patches. So we are now up to five med patches and two stim packs. We'll definitely be handing the stim packs out because we don't want another loss like Sydney. That would be just too brutal. So, all right, so that's what Brief found for us. Uh, let's take a look at what Jerund and his little turtle Jeff have found on their trading. 35. A gun upgrade kit. I think we're going to do get our choice of laser sight, bipod, or beam light. We're going to try a beam light. I don't think we have one of those. So he found us a beam light for a gun upgrade. And uh, we'll find out what that does in a second. So Chun. What is Chun Fine? 92. More medical reserves. We're now up to seven med patches and uh, four stim packs. So basically everybody's gonna have stim packs. And then Victor Van Vander Thrust, the man, the myth, the legend, because now we're starting to influence stuff outside of this game. He finds 46. Something interesting. Roll on the loot table. 131. Loot table. What did we find? 46. Gear. What gear did we find? Four. Gun mod. Okay, what gun mod did we find? Gun mod, there we go. We found 93, an upgrade kit. All right, let's check out what some of this stuff does. So, beam, light. Beam pistol, beam weapon, beam light. When using the weapon in conditions of reduced visibility, increase visibility by one. There we go, that ain't bad. And then the upgrade kit is plus two range increase. So not bad options. We'll play around with those. I'll have to take some time to think about it. So that is it for our um, trading. Now we go ahead and go back to the turn. And let's see what happens here. So we're gonna go to back to where we go here. So everybody's done trading. We've got some cool stuff. Um, everybody who doesn't have a stim pack is getting a stim pack. I'm not gonna worry about it on Chun because she's got the ignore the next injury from a while back. Oh, we finally get to see Bree do some of the stuff me and uh, one of the commenters was talking about. So that's going to be cool. And then um, we are also going to do a stim pack for Laura. So everybody got stim packs. So we used one, two, three. So we got one extra stim pack. All right, now let's go ahead and see what we're going to be fighting against this time. So we're not doing any patrons, we're not doing any rumors, so we got to check for rivals. So what rivals are we going to be dealing with? So roll a d6, if it's equal to lower than the number of rivals, but we have two, so it's gonna be a minus two on the roll. Or is it a plus two? I know that that helps, let me see. All right, 
patrons, train, decoy. Where are you, decoy? Add one for every roll. So yeah, we 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 definitely got it. So we're at four. We've only got three rivals. So we are not going to be interfered with by our rivals this time, which is what I wanted. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and find out what type of uh, mission we're going to be doing. So that being said, because yeah, we don't even have any local patrons. Uh, so it's going to be carry out opportunity mission. We're here to just do something and yeah, get, collect our money and get out of here. So we're going to take a look at deployment conditions for this mission. So let's go ahead and clear this stuff out. We don't know who we're facing, but it's definitely not going to be the bounty hunters. Or I would laugh really, really hard if it was the bounty hunters. Super, super hard. We can only hope it's not. Though, you know, I probably should just keep these weapons. I seem to keep rolling the same weapons. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so our deployment condition for this one is going to be really 97. Gloomy. Wow, we've gotten that one a lot. I'm going to go ahead and do we have any story points? No, we don't. Okay, never mind. So it's gloomy. It's nine inches. This planet just seems to be foggy. I think that's what's going on. This planet's just foggy as hell. All right, so there's that. All right, are there any noticeable sights? 22, documentation. So we get a quest rumor if we pick this documentation up. Opportunity mission. What is our opportunity mission? 39. Oh, it's just a D10. There you go, Ed. Read the book first. That is a nine. So fight off. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. No objective, we just have to win. That is going to be interesting. Now this is opportunity. Fight off. Now let's go ahead and see how many opponents we're going to be facing. So we roll 2d6 and pick the highest. All right, three. So we are going to be facing off against three opponents, which should make for an easy weapon. Uh, we have one specialist and no lieutenants. This is the first time I think I've actually played a match where there is no lieutenant. But we might have some. 
if we are dealing with certain groups, because we got to roll off to see who we're actually playing against too. So there might be a plus one to the number, which gives us an LT. So before we do anything else, let's also look at unique individuals. So on a nine, we also have to deal with a unique individual. So it is impossible. Yes, no unique individual. So what type of enemy are we gonna be trying to fight off? That'll tell us also kind of the story about what we're doing. What was this last minute job we picked up to try and get off this planet? 49, hired muscle. This could be interesting. Let's take a look. Hire muscle. Minus one to seize the initiatives. All right, who are we actually fighting? Wow, we are rolling like 90s. Like this, this dice here, it is just nothing but 90s. 92. Um, so yeah, uh, that is Rage Lizard Mercs. Uh, the Rage Lizard Mercenary Unit specializes in boarding and shipboard operations. Uh, if Rage Lizard is within one inches of terrain, they may add plus one to brawling. So we are facing Rage Lizards. Rage Lizard Mercs. Okay, so they're not actually Rage Lizards. That's the Mercenary Company. Okay. So we've got two of them. One of the specialists. They are tactical with 3B. All right. So they don't have any numbers. That's fine. Uh, panic is one to two. They've got a four inch movement. Combat is plus one. Toughness five. Oh, damn, that's going to be rough. That is not good for me. With them being tactical, that's going to be super, super rough. And we go to commercial break, which is just fine. So I can get a drink to uh, my subscribers. How are you guys doing today? You know, drop me a line if you're subscribed and watching. So, um, wow. Let me just drop my drink because why not? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what weapons we're going to be facing off against. So, weapon three. So, we have hand lasers. For my specialists, they are on B. My specialists are running around with shell guns. All right, so let's take a look at just what that means. So hand lasers obviously would be small range. So we've got 12 inches. And laser gets one shot, no extra damage. And it is snapshot of pistol. And I think I've been playing the snapshot wrong in the previous ones. Uh, but let's look it up. And then we've got shell gun. 30 inch range, two shots. 
and it is a heavy area. That's not good. Uh, resolve all shots against the initial target. They cannot be spread. Then resolve one bonus shot against every figurine within 12 inches. So like I thought, it is a massive shotgun, if not like a little mini mortar. Um, and then snapshot, they get plus one to hit with it if they're within six inches. So I think I've been playing that wrong. Hopefully we'll take a look at it and be able to do a better job this time. All right, so let's talk about the story for this mission. Poor Sydney has passed away. The crew, known as Hope's Loss, aboard the ship Mass Simulator, are trying to get out of here, plus pay their friends the proper respects. So they hear about a Merc group going around and bothering locals. Um, you know, asking for getting protection money, harassing, you know, the typical thing that bad mercs do. And so people have asked our crew, because they know that we're pretty badass, uh, to go in and try and push these guys off. And uh, us being the heroic crew we are, we agree to go in and help some people. So let's go ahead and build up some terrain. So we got the local neighborhood again. This time, instead of the industrial settings and other stuff, we need to build some houses. So we got to build a little neighborhood, maybe a little bit of business. So give me a second. Let me go through my massive quantity of terrain here. And uh, yeah, we will build a little neighborhood. So we've got some cool little 3D printed houses that we use for Star Wars Legion. We'll go ahead and set them up around here. Then we'll go ahead and use the uh, Star Wars Legion bunker kind of a store shop and then we'll even get let's see where did my little bunkers go that we also 3d printed so we're going to do all 3d printed terrain today so we've got some other houses just kind of showing off a little bit of a neighborhood. Um, we'll even put up some temple stuff, and some power generators. You know what? We'll actually go nuts. A lot of piece of terrain that I haven't filmed with in forever. So behind all of these houses, we also got a massive temple that uh, the locals go to. There we go. So here's our little neighborhood where these mercenaries have been bothering our uh, locals that they've asked us to come help them out with. So. Go ahead and see about setting up. So tactical, advance half, they'll attempt to close within 12. Yeah, and it's a gloomy night, so remember that. All right, and then where are they as towards deployments? So tactical divided evenly among three teams. All right. So because we only have three guys, we will actually just have three dudes that are randomly harassing the poor inhabitants of this little local village. And they'll each be hitting their own house. 
and because they are a nasty evil merc team if i had some salamanders i'd use them but since i don't we will use space marines specifically smurfs so we'll have this is our guy with the shell gun nice little space marine sergeant he is our specialist with the shell gun and then here are our two other mercs there's one there's another that wasn't good okay so i'm gonna go clean that mess up real quick and check the damage that was not stuff i wanted to drop <clears throat> let's go see how bad the damage is yeah that was definitely not stuff that we wanted to see dropped put that there all right okay cool all of that nemesis stuff that we've been painting and put together survived the fall they made it out of good stuff. All right. Whew, I can stop having a heart attack. Okay, so tactical eight inches apart. Let's find a tape measure. We have a couple in here. At least I'm pretty sure. We should. All right, there's one. I just got to walk for it. There we go. All right, eight inches apart. We're gonna have this guy harassing people there at the temple. And we have the Sarge harassing people there. And we've got this guy harassing people in this house. And remember on this one, it is going to be gloomy and foggy. So they will definitely be at the advantage here. So let's see, okay, 2d6 towards that direction. Seven inches. So right there, we've got some documentation hiding for us. Let me see if I've got a good little marker. I don't want the big ones. Uh, screw it. We'll use this. So right there, there's our documentation. Okay. And let's see if there's anything else fun that comes up. All right. Now it'll just be setting up our people. So, Altel with his marksman rifle with bipod, he picked that up. He's gonna set himself down here, the back of the street, laying down prone and getting ready to rock and roll. Then Victor Van Vanderthrust and be up against this building. We've got Bree. She's gonna be set up over here. Chun is gonna be with her. The captain's gonna be right here. Jerund is gonna set up on the opposite side of Victor. And there is our six people. So let's go ahead and get the great dice of time out and get this started. So here is our cruise. Try to uh, save people from these mercs. And we'll see if they also become rivals and how much money we can get. So going into turn one, here we go. So seize the initiative. We've got one, two people with savvy. 
Uh, so only plus one. We aren't outnumbered, unfortunately. So we need a 10 up because that plus one gets taken out by the hired muscle. So we need higher than a 10. We do not get it. Okay. So we got six people trying to get ones and twos. We need ones and twos. Here we go. So this one does have to go to Bree. Then we've got a two. So Bree gets the one because she's the feral. And then for the two, because we can't see anything and because of how foggy it is, um, there's no sense in giving it to either uh, Altel or Victor. So we're actually gonna go ahead and give it to Garand and see about him coming this way. Mm. Yeah, we'll see how that plays out. All right, so let's go ahead and start with Bree off. So hypothetically, they don't know where these guys are. They just hear down the street, people yelling, screaming, going, help us, help us, stop oppressing us, that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and have them kind of start to try and clear stuff out. So Bree has a speed of five. She's gonna go ahead and add two to it. Even her seven, she's gonna end up right there on that piece of rubble there. Then Grund also has a speed of four. So he's gonna go to six because he's gonna use both movements for it. I'm gonna come around to right here. All right, then unfortunately it is the enemy's turn. So they are gonna continue to harass people. So this guy has been harassing the people of the temple for their extortion money. So he's going to continue walking down the street four inches to go here and stay in cover. And we've got this guy who was coming up to the house. We'll actually take the roof off. And he's basically gonna go inside to harass the poor villagers inside there. And this guy came up on this house. He's gonna come up over here, come towards that front door, come in and harass the people in that house. That is it for the enemy. Victor Van Vanderthrust is going to come out over here and try and get up onto the road. So he's got a movement of four. He's going to come up here, kind of get ready to back this guy, back all tell up and cover in the road. The captain is going to come up. She's got a movement of five. She's gonna come up here, check inside this house, see that there's nothing there, then go her additional couple inches and bring her there, which will give us the documentation. So that'll give us one quest rumor. Then we've got Chun, who is gonna follow Bree out. She has a movement of five, so she's gonna get seven inches, and she wants to get up on top of that temple. Get ready to provide some cover fire. Okay. And that is it for turn one. Turn two is anybody in visibility. So nine inches. Nope, they haven't seen each other yet. But our crew is definitely still hearing the screams as these three marks continue through. So let's go ahead and get a roll on. Hopefully get lots of ones and twos. That would be great. Here we go. So we do get a two. Doesn't have to go to Bree because it's not a one. Um, I think in this situation, we're still going to have Garoond and little Jeff take it on and have them run this way and try and perform a flank. So 
Jeroen. 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 I don't know. I haven't set down on his name yet. You got to work on that. Uh, he's got a speed of four. So he's going to go six. And up there. All right. This guy. I'm going to come in here and start harassing people inside this house. This guy, our specialist, done harassing people out of there. He's going to go six inches, come out over here. And then this guy is going to go to the front of the, ta the temple and see Bree. And he's going to go, what the, what are you doing here? You need to leave, that kind of thing. You know, or I'm going to splatter you. All that kind of fun stuff. So Bree doesn't take it all that well, but unfortunately, our uh, friend here. Um, is going to go, f you know, take a pot shot first. So. He's going to come down. Sorry, looking up the rules. It's been a week or two since we played. So firing. We are not within six inches. Unfortunately. So he's not going to get that plus one on a snap fire. Or that. But we do have an open target within range. So he's going to have a five up looking for. And then it's going to turn up to a four up because he does have the plus one to combat. And he misses. So no worries there. But with that blast, he has now illuminated himself all the way over here and alerted his friends that things have gone bad. Um, from there, it is our crew's turn. So our captain does have line of sight on him barely you can kind of see it from here he's got just that corner so we're going to kind of give him a little bit of like a cover bonus um so the captain is going to aim and shoot because she just freaked out hearing somebody take a shot at brie so with her infantry laser she's going to aim so we get to reroll ones uh looking for fives normally because he's no he's within cover so sixes now looking for fives and then because of her plus one combat and let's see what happens no she misses and no rerolling nothing no ones to reroll so brie is going to take a shot with her colony rifle and needing fours because she's got a plus one she misses so now all kinds of firing is lit off these guys have all seen each other um chan is going to continue her quest to try and get up onto this temple with her five inch movement giving her seven so she is right there uh All tail still can't see anything. Is he's a heavy weapon? Yes. So he is actually going to stay put. Victor Van Vanderthrust is also going to stay put because he's got a heavy weapon. And he wants to see what happens. And that goes to the end of turn two. Now we go to see what crazy stuff happens at the random action table after turn two. So at the end of turn two, what happens to my poor crew? Let's see what happened to the D10 I just was using for directions. There we go. Wow, really? This is like the umpteenth 90 that this thing has rolled tonight. This is crazy. So, 91. I found something. Randomly select a crew member, then place a marker 1d6 from them in a random direction. The enemy will ignore it. If the crew member moves into contact, spends an on-combat action, we get to roll a loot. So, 
we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So, which crew member found something? Two, one, two. Okay, from Victor. It goes that direction. How many inches? Four inches. So from Victor, back this way, four inches. We've got a cool little trophy. If somebody gets it, we get a loot action. One additional loot roll, which is gonna be huge for us since we're trying to get off this planet. All right, we'll go to turn three. Still got all six crew members, which is always nice. So let's go ahead, see if we can get a bunch of ones and twos. Nothing. Oh, that is horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Yeah, not good. Okay, so these guys get to go all by themselves. So tactically, this guy is actually going to back up a little bit, get behind some cover, and take a shot at Bree. So needing a four up, because she's still out in the open, gets it. Oh no, Bree. Okay, so she's toughness four. Oh, she gets knocked back and gets a stun counter. Doink. And she is now up to one stun. All right, the specialist is gonna run up to help his bud and ask what's going on, but he's gonna run up over here. Now he'd run towards where the firing is. Tactically, he'd run up, go his four inches, ask the guy over the comm system, what are you firing at? Then they're gonna talk about how my crew is sitting there and uh, trying to stop them from pillaging this poor little town here. And then he's gonna go an extra two inches, try and get a good shot off with his shotgun next turn. All right, so for you guys who are joining us, it's turn three. My poor crew is trying to build up some cash for their former crewmate's funeral and to get off of this planet because now we've got too many rivals. We're facing it off against a Merc company that's called the Raging Rage Lizards Mercs. And uh, yeah, this is not looking so great. We're fighting on a gloomy planet so this guy hasn't seen anything, but he's heard the firing. You can't see without outside of nine inches for shooting unless somebody's already shot. So this guy's shot, Bree shot, the captain shot. So everybody's kind of trying to scramble and talk to each other and see what's going on over the radio without actually being able to see anything. So those are those two. This guy is gonna come hauling out of this house where he's been doing nefarious things and try and catch up with his buddies. So he'll end there. Then it goes to our crew. Bree is gonna run up and take cover here and remove a star token. And we've got Jerund with his little turtle Jeff named by Wamoose. He's gonna run his six inches to get there. Still doesn't have range on that. Uh, the captain, with her five inches, is gonna run up and get up against this building. Not daring to poke her head out quite yet. Chun, who's got four inches. No, five inches as well. She's actually gonna poke her head out over this temple, knowing that that guy's there, now surprised to see that guy, the specialist, she's gonna start taking a pot shot. So, with her colony rifle, 
meeting, shooting at the first guy. Oh, they're both within six. She's actually going to shoot at the specialist because she knows that's the bigger target. So here we go. Chun, needing a, normally a three up, but now a two up because open target within six, she's got a plus one. Do we get a two up? We do. Now they have toughness five. So this would need to be a five or a six. No, one. So this guy is pushed back an inch and has a stun token on him. And then Victor, hearing more and more yelling, has decided the street's actually not gonna be where the main combat is. So he's gonna come running this way. Altel is also a little bit worried and uh, decides the captain's yelling at both of them to haul their asses over here. So he's gonna run up here. And then I think that is it. So we go to turn four. So on turn four, the crew and these uh, mercs are squaring down in this back alley instead of the road, like we were hoping for with this pre-setup. Now we go into initiative. So do we have any ones or twos? We do have a two, doesn't have to go to Bree. Um, we're actually gonna go ahead and give it to Chun if she's got the two reaction. She does. So Chun's gonna get a shot off first. Now, unfortunately, I think her first shot pushed her off. No, the dude's still within six. So she's gonna take aim and fire, which means she gets a plus one. She's already hitting on a two, so Basically, as long as this thing, okay, it does hit. Now we need a five or six. Six. So Chun has destroyed the specialist before he even got a shot off. And she claims first blood. First blood. So Chun first blood. Okay, that is her turn. These guys are a little freaked out. He's gonna take a shot up at her. She's gonna get a little bit of cover, but seeing how she's poking out at the top, yeah, we'll give her a little bit of cover. So we'll call her cover. So he needs a five up, gets it. Oh, that's not good. All right, Chun has a toughness of four. Oh, he snaps up, takes a shot at Chun, and she is now a casualty. So while she was focused at shooting down the specialist, she gets taken out and we go to an ad break. So I'll sit here and kind of relax for my uh, followers and subscribers. If you're subscribed while we're dealing with this ad break, if you want to tell me about your day, your plans for the weekend, what do you got going on? I'd love to hear it. So, all right. So, trying to think where we're going to go from here. Chun's down. This guy just shot. This guy's gonna be running up over. Yeah, this is gonna be rough. Let's see if I can eat a taffy in 40 seconds. Hmm.
All right, we're back. So this raging lizard just knocked Chun out. This one's going to continue running. He's going to try and see if he can flank because the raging lizards only know about these guys. They don't know about these two or him. Okay. Well, Bree is going to shoot at the guy in cover, needing a five up because she's got a plus one. Gets it. Needing another five up. Uh, but she does blast him back an inch and he gets a stun token. And I just realized we totally forgot about this loot thing. So, we're going to have Victor Vanderthrust haul ass back. Because he's, who's greedy? No, he wants glory. Uh, he wants power. Yeah, he's going to fall back. So he's going to go running back going, oh wait, I forgot about this. He's going to run back to try and get that loot. Alto, I'm going to run his six inches to try and get a better position on the developing battle. Jeruined, here's somebody running across this way. Can't see him, but here's the running. So he's going to move his six inches up to try and catch up and goes, oh, holy crap. No, he'd start moving, go the four, see the guy, then shoot. So, shooting at that guy, he's got two shots with his needle rifle, looking for fours, because this guy is, well, no, looking for twos, because he's within six inches. So here we go, looking for those twos. All right, gets that one, doesn't get that one, so only one goes through, needing a five up. Oh, so close. All right, so pounds this guy over an inch, and he's got a stun token on him. So the crew is circling in on these mercs. And the captain, upon hearing that, is going to come around. And she's going to take a shot at him. So, with her infantry laser, are they within six inches? Yes, they are. So, she's going to get plus one from the snapshot, plus one from her combat. So, it pretty much auto hits. Needing the five. No. So, she pounds him back an inch in the crossfire, and he now has two stun tokens. All right, at the end of the turn, we need to see if anybody flees. So, one to two, these guys flee. So if I get box or if I get snake eyes, both these guys run away. One of them does run away. Oni, thank you for the hydrate, man. It is much needed. So, the dude who's hit, getting cross-fired has decided he isn't getting paid enough and he's run away. Then we see what happens at the end of turn four that can just screw with the crew. Let's see what happens. So we get a 53. The clock is running out. At the end of the next round, and each round thereafter, roll 1d6. On a 6, the game ends immediately. Oh, so I've now got to start rolling. If I get a 6 after each turn, it's game over, even if I can't, which means I could lose, and then we won't get all kinds of credits. No. All right. So the clock is ticking, and it would make sense. This guy just saw a specialist die. His friend just said, screw this, I'm out, and runs away. 
Yeah, not good. So Oni, what are you doing tonight, man? I know you were uh, washing orcs last night. Talk to me, what are we doing tonight? Well, I roll off to see what the remaining five crew members on the field do. All right, so we got some ones and twos. The one has to go to Bree. And we will set Jerome up with the two. Because he has pretty good sight right there. So, let's go ahead and uh, start with Bree. So Bree is not happy about what just happened to her friend. So she's actually going to use her jump belt, shoot up from here, and land in front of them and show why you don't screw with the feral. Ah, filling out applications. Good man. 109 orcs. Holy frack, man. That is a crap ton of orcs. Okay, so our feral bear chick, Bree Fonda, who's had to save her family from kidnapping on this planet, now goes to rip this little uh, lizard mech. So she gets a plus one because she's got a pistol. He gets a plus one because he's got a pistol. And uh, yeah, here we go. So we will have black as the enemy, tan as our Brie. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So with that six, she inflicts two hits looking for fives. Oh yeah. <laughs> so Bree in utter rage of seeing Chun shot off of the field, blasts her way up and comes shooting down with her gun, her jump belt and lands on top of the dude and just rips him apart. And then, unfortunately, we did not have enough time to pick that up. Let me see exactly when the turn ends, or when everything ends. Because if I can get it, if yeah, let's see. Uh, ends in one of the following circumstances. Okay, I'm actually gonna play this as since we held the field and this happened early in the turn, he get, got the chance to run over and grab this because it doesn't make sense for them just to sit there and go, okay, cool, we won. Don't go grab that shiny thing. So I'm gonna say we get the additional loot and we get the quest rumor. So we will go ahead and come on back over to the sheet, see how much money we actually got, if it's enough to pay for the funeral and to get us off of this planet. And we'll go from there. So, let's take a look into things. Let's bring this sheet back up. Okay, so, uh, we did secure the documentation. And we did get the additional loot. Chun got first blood. It's actually a pretty quick battle. I think from here, we're going to be seeing about adding up the difficulty. But let's see what happens at the end of the battle. So, I didn't even have to stress about that, uh, the battle ending dice roll. So, first we need to see if they become a rival. So on a one, the smart company now is a rival to us. Okay, they are not. 
Oh, okay. And uh, so they've decided business is business. These guys were actually kind of working outside the company line. So they got what they result, they deserved. So getting paid, we get D6 credits. So we won, so we're gonna get at least three. Maybe we'll get more. We get four credits because we won the battle. We did hold the field. So let's take a look and see what we got for holding the field. Battlefield finds, 83. Vital info, invasion edifice. Okay. So we now have times three vital info. I'm holding on to it. I know it says corporate patron automatically on this world, but I'm gonna say I hold on to it. I'm, I'm kind of bending the little rules here. So we're trying to get out of here. And most of these corporations have presences on most planets. I mean, it's an interstellar kind of thing. We're not just gonna have corporate info on a local. Okay. Check for invasion. We aren't in an invasion thing. So we get to roll twice on the loot table. But first, let's see about the injuries. Now, the nice thing about Chun is if it is an injury, we get to ignore it. But I'd like to hold on to that. So let's find out. On the injury roll. If I can find out what just happened to the dice I've been using. Okay, here we go. Chun with an 83 knocked out, no long term. So we ignore the next injury. So she continues. She was just knocked out. All right, let's do experience. So our good friend, the Captain, she still has one luck. Why are you trying to delete that, Ed? So she gets three experience. Bree. Gets three experience. Chan gets one experience for becoming a casualty. And then Kine killed the and first to infect. So she gets two, bringing her up to six. Altel goes up to seven. Jerun, holy crap. Up to 13. We need to spend some experience on that boy. And then Victor Van Vander Thrust is up to four. So, Jerome, what are we doing with all of your experience, man? Um, well, I tell you what, let's give you some savvy, because you do have the turtle. So that's going to cost you five. Oh, wait, were we saving for something? I think we might have been saving his experience for something. Uh, advanced training. Was there some advanced training we wanted him to do? Yeah, I think we were saving it for some advanced training. So, let's... Okay. Yeah, we were saving that for some advanced training. I'll tell. We are going to spend seven to get your reactions up to a two. All right. So, for we don't have any money, but we're saving experience for it because I think we're gonna end up giving him some security training or merchant school. All right. Um, we need some credits. So we're gonna sell some undamaged items. We're gonna sell the infantry rifle, the colony rifle, Well, we'll sell the beam light. And so that'll give us five credits. You know what? We'll also sell six med patches since we've got the medical bay to give us two more credits. This way, 
We're now up to seven. We can get one credit more. We can, uh, yeah. Because I don't want to sell anything else. So we need one more credit off the loot table. So let's take a look at the loot table. What did we get? We get to roll twice. First time. Seventy-nine. We got some odds and ends. Come on, we need we need some good stuff on the odds and ends. Ninety-seven ship items. What ship items did we get? We scored a 14, a duplicator. All right, what does a duplicator do? We'll have to check that out. All right, for the second loot table, 35. So the townspeople were so happy that we saved them from that. They gave us a duplicator, and then they gave us a damaged weapon. So... Damaged weapons, so we get two of them. So the first one, 65, is a special weapon. What special weapon did we get? A 20. We got another needle rifle, but it's broken. That's fine. Okay, what's the second weapon we got? A 10. So it is a slug weapon. What is our slug weapon? A 50. A military rifle. Okay, I didn't want to have to do this, but we're kind of going to go ahead and go back a little bit and we'll sell the booster pills, the insta wall, and the last med patch to give us the eight credits we need to pay for the funeral and to get off of this planet. Let's see what happens for our individual and campaign things. So the campaign event table, 62. Okay, this music definitely is not a good one for what we're doing. Ed needs to pay more attention. So 62. All right, you've made some business contacts. Add a new Patreon to the list of known. So yeah, we've got to add a patron. We'll roll that off in a minute. And then what does one through six? So what does Altel get up to? I think this is the first time we've rolled for him. 97. The deep feeling of melancholy, melancholy and despair is afflicting you. Oh, are you serious? So no XP next turn. That sucks. So I'll tell, apparently he, uh, he was really hit hard by the death of Sydney. And uh, as we spend the three credits at the end of the turn to uh, go for her funeral, it really broke him. Like a lot harder than he'd like to comment on. And um, so even though he wasn't the one out for romance like Jeroen was, he, he was still kind of having the hots for poor Sydney there. So her loss, it, it really is striking him. And um, yeah, so next turn, oh, let's go ahead and roll the patron 
even though we really don't need it because we're going to try and get off of this planet, maybe, hopefully, but we might as well roll the patron up. So, after a beautiful funeral, they uh, lay Sydney's remains down to rest. Since they're on a different planet, because I think Sydney arrived on a previous planet. Um, there really wasn't much, but they kind of held the corporate stand, the, the uh, crew standards. So, what kind of patron did we just roll up? It is a three, which is a local government. All right, danger table. So whenever we do work for this local government, they really like that we kick that Merknet company's ass. So we get plus two credits. Then if we are staying on this planet, what's this mission that we're gonna get? Five, they have to do it the next turn. But I think we're gonna try and get out of here. All right, local government, are there any benefits to this mission? Maybe, maybe this might be enough to keep them to stay for a little bit longer. We'll see. So for local government, we need an eight up. No. Oh, that's a 10. Never mind. So we do get a benefit. Do we have a hazard? Yes, we do. Do we have a condition? No, we do not. So our benefit is an eight persistent. Oh, uh, we might have to. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be huge to have a persistent. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be huge to have a persistent patron. We might just have to do this. Let's see what the hazard is. It is a one dangerous job. Oh, oh, this is tough. Now we've got a reason to stay, to have a persistent patron. That's just huge. Oh, okay. Well, that will be the it for the uh, turn 11. I've got some thinking to do because the crew, the crew was looking forward to leaving this planet behind, but just as they were finishing up the funeral, the uh, townsfolk had come out that they had just saved and wanted to pay their respects, even though they didn't know Sydney. They knew that the crew had came and saved them while dealing with that loss. So they wanted to be there and help them. Um, yeah. And after the funeral, the captain was approached by a member of the local government and said, we might have a job for you. And uh, yeah, it turns out that this was a pretty powerful member that had friends in different systems. So we might just have to do that, but we'll find out next week. You guys have a great night. Uh, if you're watching this on Twitch, please uh, follow. If you've got Amazon Prime memberships, we'd love to have your Amazon Prime membership. It doesn't cost you any extra. Uh, just, yeah, it comes with your Amazon Prime. So if you can send your Amazon Prime subscription to us, we'd appreciate it. We're looking at starting up some tournaments. We're gonna be doing some remodels on the table and inside the battle bunker. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, please like, share, subscribe. I always love hearing you guys' comments on what I'm doing right, what I'm doing, especially if I'm what I'm doing wrong. Because I want to, yeah, I definitely want to get better at this game. This is one of my favorite games to play. And I'm glad you guys are enjoying it with me. You guys have a great night and we'll see you soon.